Okay, I'm going to turn this over to my moderators, uh, Judge Dennis Jones and Judge Early Wiley. Court. 
a general jurisdiction court, civil, family, and criminal jurisdiction. Felony criminal, that means the most serious of the, of the crimes, everything from capital murder to big drug cases, aggravated robbery, aggravated sexual assaults, uh, major theft, uh, you name a serious crime, our court has jurisdiction over. We also have family jurisdiction, divorces, custody, modifications, adoptions, civil, mainly in uh, the amount of controversy above $100,000. I've tried everything from trade secret cases, fraud cases, real estate, uh, you name the civil arena, we have tried those cases. I have a 98% rate of being affirmed on appeal on cases that have been taken up on appeal. I have been serving you efficiently and effectively. When I took office, there was at least a three-year backlog in the criminal docket. Whittle that down, we now have 300 people on average in the jail, whereas we had about 550 on average in the jail when I took office. We run a very efficient, effective docket. About 1,200 cases a year are filed in my court. I dispose of about 1,200 cases a year. I've disposed of over 15,000 cases while I've been on the bench. In addition to my regular docket, I run a diversion court program for the mentally ill and substance abusers. That's a very effective program. We have a 12% recidivism rate for people who have graduated that program. That provides treatment instead of incarceration for people who need treatment and no jail for the nonviolent, non predatory population. So it's been my pleasure to serve you, and I look forward to doing it for another term. Thank you. John, um, just a few questions. A couple of them are directed to both of you, but there's a couple that are directed to the incumbent. I'll start with the first question. It reads, if it, if, with the county having to pay thousands of dollars to the IRS because of late 1099s that were filed, that the auditor you hired was responsible for that, how can you continue to think that she is the best person for the job. And I'll be glad to read that again, except for the mic judge, because Forney has provided two mics, so we don't have to share. So that's why I, I just want you to make sure. You have a question about what I read? No, I got it. Let me just say that in addition to running a civil, family, and criminal court, there are certain administrative duties that the district judges share. One of those is that the two district judges make appointments for the county auditor, and together with the county judge, we make appointments for the purchasing agent. We also serve on juvenile boards. Uh, we supervise adult probation. Uh, we do a variety of things administratively. Uh, our county auditor uh, has been on the position, I think, now uh, since 2012. She is an award-winning county auditor. She has been given awards for transparency by the state controller. When we appointed her to the position in 2012, there were 18 issues on the outside audit. She has eliminated all 18 of those issues. She inherited some problems that she's been working on, and the one you mentioned, Judge, is one of those uh, that existed when she took office. Thank you, Judge City. Mr. Weaver, 30 second response. If you, if you have anything you want, if you don't know, it may be well, too inside baseball. Well, uh, the only thing I would say about that's something I would look at if elected and uh, just look at her performance. I think it's very essential that we have transparency in government, that people who uh, look at their county government don't have to wonder why uh, things aren't getting done on time. There should be an explanation as to why that's the case. And I think that she did try to do that. Uh, but I would definitely I want to look at the auditor position and see if it changes. Mr. Weaver, why don't you just stay up there because I've got two questions that would go to both of y'all. And it's really not a rebuttal, so it gives you guys an opportunity to just respond to the audience because this question was posed. So can we do something like 45 seconds for each of them since it's not really a rebuttal? A little different, or a minute for each? For the question, there's not a rebuttal. So, 
What contribution have you made to Coffee County is the question, and then we'll give the city a chance. And it's to both judges. I think for Teresa and I, we're, we're passionate about children. We've been a foster family. Uh, we came out to Kaufman County with five children. We adopted another uh, foster child while we were here. We're a family of six. Uh, Teresa and I, I know what it's like to be an attorney representing children. I know what it's like to be an attorney representing parents, to be an uh, attorney seeking to terminate the parental rights. I think I bring something unique to this job in the sense that I have all positions that are possible in a CPS case. I've been involved in, and I know the inner workings of child protective services, not just as a lawyer, but as a foster parent and as an advocate for children. And I think we bring that to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Weaver. Judge, would you like an opportunity? And the question is, what contributions have you made to Coffman County? I think you have a minute. The uh, history I have in Coffman County, I'm a fifth generation Texan number one. My family has been in Coffman County since the 1800s. And uh, I'm a native of Carroll, grew up with a high school there, graduated from high school at Salutatorium, was student body president. Uh, went to SMU on a scholarship, graduated student senator uh, with high honors, went to law school, had a summer scholar in law school, came back home to practice law, and I've served on various city boards, including the Charter Revision Committee, Downtown Advisory Board, Chairman of the uh, Public Library Board, served as President of the Carroll Alliance for Education and the Arts, slash E. Carroll. I've served on the Coffman County Historical Commission and the State Board of the American Cancer Society. I uh, presently serve as a director of the Texas Association of Drug Court Professionals. I have served uh, on the uh, North Texas Behavioral Health Authority four terms as chairman of the Local Mental Health Authority for the Seven County area of Dallas, Collin, Coffman, Rockwall, Hunt, and Dallas. Thank you so much. I think the time is up. Judge, Judge, I do have another question. Judge Jenny? I have another question. Judge, your opponent uh, works for a state agency which receives federal funds as a portion of its revenue. In light of this, at other debates, for those that don't know, it's been stated that um, he wasn't eligible to run for office. The question asks that the, it states that the Hatch Act was amended in 2012 to allow employees of state offices to run for public office if their agency is only partially funded by the federal government, uh, which would include the question posed as the Child Support Division of the Attorney General's Office. And the question ends with, are you aware of that 2012 amendment, or is it some other attempt to uh, mislead or misinform the voters is what the question poses? Well, number one, uh, the question was asked of me at the last forum uh, if I knew what the Hatch Act was. And I responded, uh, yes, I knew what the Hatch Act was. The Hatch Act prohibits a federal employee or a state employee who is funded directly or indirectly by the United States or a federal agency from seeking elected office in a partisan election. That's how I responded. I have been told that someone has filed a complaint against Harry for violation of the Hatch Act. I'm familiar with the provision judge you're talking about, and I'm going to quote to you from an attorney general's opinion by Greg Abbott that addresses that issue. And it says, the determination of whether a particular person's employment is subject to the Hatch Act is a fact question beyond the scope of an attorney general opinion. That means that this case, this complaint filed against Harry is still pending and under investigation and being inappropriate for me to comment on its merits. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. If you go online to Wikipedia, you can look at it, you will see that uh, somebody who is funded by state funds, as I am, I'm Assistant Texas Attorney General. By the way, I get my check from the same person Judge Chitty gets his check from every month. The Comptroller of Public Accounts writes my paycheck. So I get funds from the state of Texas. It's true that the Texas Attorney General does get some federal funds, but that's really irrelevant. Also, as an employee of the Attorney General, 
we have a process that we go through. There's about six people that had to sign off on my paperwork to permit me to run for office. So I'm very confident uh, that we comply with the law. I work for a premier uh, law enforcement agency, and uh, I've been in contact with the Department of Justice. I gave him my cell phone. In fact, she left me a message tonight. She said, I haven't gotten all the information I need yet, Mr. Weaver, but I'll let you know when I do. It is a serious complaint from somebody who doesn't know the law.
not hold it against him. He has to sneak out. That little sweet girl that was here, his daughter, is now six. He may have to leave a little from two months so he can do that. We also have the State Board of Education place nine, and that is Hank Heron. And if he, uh, there's no questions, but he'd like to give his remarks, and then we'll get right to the tax assessor's letter. Hi, folks. Like I said, my name is Hank Herring, and I'm running for State Board of Education, District 9. For those who do not know, we have 31 sen senators in the state of Texas. We only have 15 that do the State Board of Education. So therefore, the district is twice the size of a senatorial district. Mine encompasses 31 counties. So it does take a whole lot of travel. 30 years, I have been enforcing and and proclaiming the Founding Fathers' principles in the Republican Party. I've been in the state, I've been on the state uh, platform committee three times, I've been on the credentials committee once, I've been on the nominations committee once, I've been the uh, Smith County Resolutions Chairman for the past 14 years. So I've been holding up the principles of our Founding Fathers. In this position, the, the constitutional responsibility of the State Board of Education is oversight of the permanent school fund, which currently is valued at $30 billion, and to make sure that it's kept well for our schools. That's what the purpose is. In addition to that, it has four other purposes. Primarily, it's the curriculum, the uh, items that are being uh, chosen for the instruction materials, the uh, third one is to have graduation requirements, and the fourth one is to appoint special members to uh, military reservation and special school districts. <clears throat> Aside from that point, the fact is that our primary responsibility is fiduciary. With that being said, I've been the treasurer for the Republican Club in Smith County for, 14, for 10 years, and, and treasurer for the, for the Republican Party for 10 years. I've also been treasurer for the high school referees, the recreational referees, and two churches in the process. So somewhere along the line, someone's trusted me with money. My responsibility is to do that, and that's what I plan to do. Within that statement, I'm also going to divert by saying this. We are the responsibility. By John Adams, he said, this structure, this constitution is only good for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the government of any other. We must reinstitute, if we haven't already, we must reinstitute and we must encourage the Founding Fathers' principles within our education system. We need to hold that premise strongly and powerfully within the State Board of Education, and that's what I plan to do. Thank you very much for your time. Good evening, my name is Dennis Jones, and I am one of the co-moderators uh, this evening. Next to the candidates are the, uh, is the uh, county tax assessor collector. We have the incumbent, uh, Tanya Rasmus, and the challenger, Brenda Sample. We're going to have the opening statement by the challenger first, the second. <laughs> and Dick Murphy also is the challenger. He will uh, follow uh, the second. Thank you all so much for coming tonight. If you're here tonight, it means you want answers. You're here on your own time because you care about our county and you want to make sure I care about it as much as you do. And yes, I do. That is why I'm here. My name is Brenda Samples and I want to be our next tax assessor collector. I'm not a politician, but what I am is honest and I'm loyal and I have a strong work ethic. I have developed a successful career and relationships with numerous people and companies. I have a proven reputation. I believe that my track record is clear evidence of what I would be able to achieve if you were to decide to appoint me to this office. I am ambitious, highly driven, and I relish a challenge. I have lived in Hawkins County over 55 years. I have been in this in our county 
and a great dividing respect for our citizens. I am fully prepared to lead this division of Coffin County government. I have no friends in the office, and I have no special agenda. I have solid conservative values, and I will enjoy a full day's work with my team. Our county deserves a full-time tax assessor collector who recognizes the taxpayers' greatest contact with the county is through this office. This is the Customer Service Department of the County. I am committed to ensure accountability and efficient customer service is delivered to the citizens. I expect all collection funds to be accounted for and remitted to the appropriate entities. I expect clean and seamless audits of the financial. I expect a fully compliant voting process. I have high expectations for myself and for this office. I've been self-employed for over 30 years, which is most of my, well, actually most of my life, more than 30 years, actually. And that makes me a very highly motivated person. And that if it's not growth, why fix it attitude, that is not in my vocabulary. There are always ways to improve. I am open to grow and learn with the ever-evolving changes we face. With my unique blend of experience, my real estate background, and my people skills, I feel this separates me from my opponents. I am motivated, disciplined, and focused. I am willing to do what it takes to get the job done. I will always look for ways to be more efficient and save the taxpayers money. I welcome the opportunity to serve each of you in this room and every single citizen of our great county. I respectfully ask for your vote and the opportunity to serve you. It will be my honor to serve as your Coffin County Tax Assessor Collector. My name is Brenda Samples and I approve this message. So well, as he said, I'm Dick Murphy. I hope this a lot of y'all were in peril, so you don't hear the story again. But at any rate, I was adopted in Dallas, grew up in Louisville, Kentucky. I got my bachelor degree in Indiana, in Greencastle, Indiana, where I met my beautiful wife, Nancy. Went from there to get a master's degree at Rutgers. After that, I went to, came back to Dallas, or came to Dallas for the first time that I knew anything about Dallas. At any rate, I worked uh, 13 years with a national CPA firm. I got my certified public accounting certificate. I then went with a partner, with a client, and uh, we were co-owners of a life and health insurance company, which I managed and president of for 30 years. And in that 30 years, uh, taught me a lot about communication with policyholders. Anyway, then we moved to Coffin County. Well, actually, we moved to Coffin County in 73, so I, that was when we started the life at any rate, uh, some of you remember writing checks for me because I was your tax assessor for eight years and then retired three years ago. At any rate, I learned a lot in the insurance business about dealing with policyholders and that helped me learn to deal with taxpayers. I really enjoyed the time I was in the office. Some of the things we accomplished while I was there, we instituted the ability to pay uh, taxes with credit cards. We improved or created an improved communication system with the appraisal system, which is really important to the tax office. We set our, actually set a record for the percent of Levy taxes selected one year, and we installed the electronic voting uh, system. At any rate, I thoroughly enjoyed my time there and would really look forward to getting back in there and doing it again. Thank you very much. My name is Tanya Ratcliffe, 
and I am your Coffin County tax assessor. I am a conservative, Christian, Republican. In the tax office, I collect nearly $150 million a year between taxes and auto registration. My job is to collect and protect your money, and that's exactly what I've been doing the past three years. The tax office has 22 staff and four offices to manage all of our auto registrations, tax collections, and to run the county elections. It's a busy job, and I enjoy doing it for you. My office enjoys a high morale and works daily to provide better customer service. When I came to the tax office, I brought with me the full background of my 25 years of naval service, of leadership and management experience, which included the responsibility for multi-million dollar budgets and supervising hundreds of people. I retired as a Navy captain. Since I got out of the Navy, I've been a city council member and I've been a mayor. I am a public servant. I'm a certified mediator in the state of Texas. I have a bachelor's degree. I have a master's degree in public administration. As a voter, I expect what you want to know is, why choose me? <laughs> and the answer is, because I'm experienced in the job, I'm educated for the job, and I'm doing a good job. Since coming to this office, I have earned my professional county collector certification. I have corrected the uh, four audit procedures that resulted in a loss of over $100,000 tax dollars. I learned how to run legal uh, elections. I revised the property resale procedures so that we brought in an extra $218,000 over the previous year and put 121 more properties back on the tax roll. I saved the county money by outsourcing the tax payments. I could go on, but I think you get the point. I've been busy finding the best possible ways that I can to serve you as your tax assessor, and I would like to continue that privilege. And I ask for your vote on March 1st. I'm Tanya Radcliffe. You and I have questions. Uh, if the question is directed towards one particular person, I'll make it known here in one. If their call for a vote, the question calls for a vote, it's my call to, uh, to decide whether a vote should be made or not. If it's not, then I'll move on to the next question. A vote, uh, the person has one minute to respond. Uh, as mentioned earlier, please candidates uh, adhere to the rules that we have here. The time's up. Time's up. First question is directed towards everyone. It says, will you implement this cost law to support the ATS radar system? And I'll go first to this. No, sir. Continuing education hours. 
I've even been fingerprinted and had background checks and I passed. Well, I went through most of my qualifications before, but I didn't mention that I am a certified uh, tax assessor. Because when I was in office, I got the certificate. And I've had eight years' experience in, in that job and in communicating with taxpayers, with auto owners, dealers, and with locals. Really enjoyed it. Love to do it again. Thank you. Like Mr. Murphy, I sort of went through my qualifications earlier. But uh, to recap, uh, the qualification system has changed, so my professional accounting uh, license certification is no longer required. But it's something that I desired to do, so that I would learn more and be able to search. So that's something that I uh, have accomplished. That is directly related to doing this job. And I think, uh, you know, the million, million dollar budgets that I handled in the Navy relates to this job. The supervision of people, and multiple people, relates to the job. And working with lots of officers, when you have detachments in different states, and the Navy also relates to this job. But mostly, I've been doing this job for the last three years, and that's my qualification. Next question is directed to Brenda Sample. Question being, you take your homestead and over 65 exemptions on your home. Yes, sir, I do. I, uh, I'm not old enough to get the homestead, I mean, the over 65 yet that my husband is. And we were glad to get that little county gift that we were allowed to get off of that. We were thrilled to get it. we have or they have or you have for the uh, tax assessor. Let me recognize two individuals that are running for the precinct chair in this precinct and I'll give them uh, three minutes to make an opening remark if they so choose. First one is Matthew Sharman and Mike Taylor. Uh, Mr. Sharman, you go first.
do market searches and vote, and you get the ballot. We so slip this very, very back after you fill up the front, of course, the head is for us. And uh, <laughs> drop the name down here. <laughs> fill the back and go to the very, very last name, which is called the anchor position. That's where I'll be. Next is Mike Taylor. Good evening, I appreciate y'all coming out. My name is Mike Taylor and I'm running for Precinct Chair. Uh, a little about myself, I'm 37 years old and uh, I grew up in Grand Prairie, Texas where I actually became a correction officer for the police department out there at the age of 18. I spent the next 13 years with Grand Prairie PD uh, where five of those years was a shift supervisor the night shift. I was stuck there forever. And uh, I actually went to quite a few schools, you know, police supervision and leadership courses uh, through the police academy. And I was actually still to this day the only Grand Prairie Correction Officer to be accepted into an FBI endorsed process negotiation school. Uh, that school and I emphasized on the mentally ill and crisis negotiation. Uh, after that, in 2011, I had to medically retire from there. And uh, I actually met my wife, my married to now, uh, and she actually kept me in the friend zone for four years before she even considered dating me. <laughs> so I guess that says a lot about my determination, or stubbornness, one or the other. <laughs> but uh, I'm hardworking, I'm dedicated, and I'm motivated. And I think I can use those qualities to get more people out on election day and show up. Uh, I know that Precinct 7 covers a lot more than just Wendell, the Wendell Farms area. And as I was going through some of those other areas, uh, I noticed that there was a lot of people that didn't even know what this position was. And uh, they actually didn't even know when election day came. I think that I can get that word out there and get that information to spread to everybody. Uh, very well so that everybody can step up and make a difference in this area and vote for the right people It's going to do good for this county. Uh, but like Matt said, we're down at the very, very bottom and uh, when you get there, vote for Mike Taylor. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we have one question directed uh, to uh, Mr. Taylor. Once again, I'm going to reformat it and ask, it, uh, ask Mr. Charlie to respond to that the question to you, Mr. Taylor, is why do you want to replace an incumbent and or how are you more qualified? Well, I don't have any experience with this. This is new to me. And I'm learning as I go. Uh, but that is one thing that I, that I do well is I learn. And I pay attention and listen to what everybody is telling me. Uh, I don't blow anybody off. I, I take in everybody's opinion and I can pretty much use all my skills to try to get more people to come out, you know, being a motivator and things like that. Uh, as far as the experience, no, I do not have to. But my goal, I'm currently going to school right now to uh, achieve my bachelor's in political science. My goal is to go all the way up in Texas government. Maybe hopefully one day have a position like Dr. Spencer and uh, make a difference for the whole state as well. So, uh, Mr. Charman, the question is going to be for you. Why are you more qualified than Mr. Taylor? Well, I'm really honest with you, when I first took the position, I wasn't sure if I was qualified. At the time, I was serving already in the political office, which I still hope to say. I'm actually currently a director for Coffin County Freshwater District 1C, which is currently in Wendell Park. Uh, I already had experience with municipalities, running you know, passes, and me knowing some of the people too. I made myself available to my constituents in that particular instance by going to social events, posting on Facebook, and making myself available to them. I don't go door to door because I'm sure you don't want to see this during Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> so um, that's pretty much why I've kind of just taken the role on besides being election judge, director, and then precinct chair. But 
feel like that was just combining all in one. Good, get the job done there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We have the sheriff's candidates next. That's an open seat, so we have three. Folks, I'm looking down here. We've got Chief Silman, Bruce Wright, and I have Chief Beavers right here. So we'll start down here in the order I, I call for opening statements. You go right ahead, and I'll go one after another, then we'll start with the questions. I can tell you there's a lot of questions that we have a time limit. When the chair calls for the time limit for all the questions, we won't get to them all, but we'll just go in the order of their chief duplicates. I'll try to take them out and make sure we cover as many areas as we can. Thank you. Go right ahead. Good evening. My name is Tim Song, and I am running to be your sheriff of Coffin County. A little bit about myself, I'm 35 years in law enforcement. I uh, began in the big city of Cedar Hill, Texas in 1980. Uh, about nine months there, eight to nine months, as a federal grant that ran out. The grant ran out. Two days later, I was working with the uh, city of University Park. Did a little over 26 and a half years there. Uh, during that time, I served as a patrol officer. I worked as a investigator for many years, working with any kind of cases you can think of, you know, assignments of the department. Uh, my kids are five, six, seven in the morning, and I'm assigned that afternoon. It just depends on what we had. After retiring from that agency, I thought I was going to take a lot of easy to retire. I went to Collin County and worked as a bailiff for Judge Mason. After about eight or nine months there, between the price of pieces being almost $5 a gallon, I still lived in
restaurants for a while out there. I had 36 years of law enforcement experience, ranging from my own county sheriff's department, where we had three deputies and the sheriff, to working for the Dallas Police Department for over 26 years. Uh, the Dallas Police Department, the desk when I left, had approximately 3,600 to 800 sworn officers, and other 1,500 civilians. So I have a multitude of years of experience in agencies both large and small. Uh, majority, almost all my time in Dallas PD was sent in a patrol function. In the last 18 years, I was a patrol sergeant. I was assigned to all the patrol divisions except two, so I worked all over the city. It seemed to be my good luck that wherever I work, I have to have the highest term in the city. Of the so I have a lot of experience with reducing crime, determining the problem, the issues of the crime in different areas and causes, who's committing them and how to go about stopping them and restoring the uh, quality of life of the citizens that they want. I retired from the Dallas Police Department in 2011 and went to work uh, one month later out here in Thompson County as an investigator for the District Attorney's Office. Mike McClellan and his wife Cindy were good friends of mine. Uh, their son Nathan worked for me in Dallas. That's how I met Mike and Cindy and he introduced us. I worked with the district attorney's office for almost two years. I was promoted to chief, de uh, chief investigator. I read before Mark Hansen got murdered. Uh, Mark and I worked together for the year preceding his murder. We both decided to uh, judge Chitty's court. And then uh, a couple of months later, Mike, after Mike and Sick were murdered, I went in and left the office. Since I've been out of the of uh, law enforcement, I've gotten very involved in the Carroll. I served on the city planning and zoning commission. Chamber of Commerce, uh, the commander of the American Legion Post in Carroll, and I serve on the board of directors of a charity based here in Florida, Sharing the Love Foundation, which is a charity for the benefit of children. And I'm asking for your vote and making your vote your primary. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Good evening. First, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out tonight. It means a lot to all of us up here to see everybody who wants to be actively involved in their community and their county. For those that don't know me, my name is Brian Beavers, and I've always loved to help people. Raised as the fourth generation here in Caldwell County, I've spent my entire personal and professional career as a public servant here in Caldwell County, where I live with my wife, Monica, and our two sons, Hunter and Fisher. It is not easy for me to stand up here and tell you about myself. I'd just rather show you. I've always found it easier to lead by example than rather just empty words. For the last 18 years, I've been the fire chief in Kemp, and for a total of 18 and a half years, I've been employed with the Coffin County Sheriff's Office. I began as a pension officer, and since then I've worked my way up to chief deputy. I've had the privilege to work in or with every single division within our department. I understand the needs of the personnel on the street, communication center, along with how to run and operate a detention center that meets or exceeds the minimum jail standards. Currently, I manage the administration side of the Sheriff's Department that consists of the communication and the detention. I oversee approximately 147 employees. I prepare and present a transparent budget of around $14 million. I'm the only candidate for Sheriff who has an experience and proven record of physical responsibility and the history of sound responsible leadership. I've had the privilege to help build the Sheriff's Office Foundation, and I'm very much proud of it. But I also understand the need for some key changes. I think it will help to try to save the taxpayers' money, keep our community safer, and ensure the next generation would like to call Coffin County home. I'm confident with my vision and leadership that we can make Coffin County one of the premier law enforcement of the state. I appreciate your time, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Chief. There are several questions, so there's a lot of citizens that are interested in this race, as well as the others. I'm going to try to combine this question, and it's for every one of us at the minute. I don't think it's any rebuttal, but the question is, what educational experience, education, sorry, what education in business or finance and what other experience do you have in running a jail with a budget 
the size approved, I'm just reading the question, I mean, I didn't write it, uh, to be the administrator of a 14 million business. That's the way it's written, okay? And is, is the budget that big for the Sheriff's Department? The total budget, yeah. Okay, so that's what they're speaking on, that, um, I mean, what experience do you have? And you've already done that in your opening, but I'm gonna give a chance for everyone else because it was one question for you. And the other is what formal education in business or finance do you have to work in and approve a budget that did? As far as my education, just a graduate from high school, done some classes. I've been through plenty of management courses through our law enforcement. I've got my uh, master's speech doctor, and I've been through uh, and so the question goes to the education and experience in running the budget for $14 million jail business. What the question poses. Um, Chief Stillman? Well, I guess we'll start talking education. Thank you. 
party affiliations. I think I'm probably the only one who looks at the signs. Top of my sign says Republican. I am a Republican. I will be for all the citizens caught in Canada, whether you're my supporter or whether you're my non supporter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
again, like I said earlier, I've had a lot of experience in being building uh, in Murphy Park. We've had a lot of issues with morale issues. We've had uh, big rides inside our doctors for the mind to help us learn how to play better together. Uh, I think one of the important things, especially since we have this ADA experience option, is just to actually be there and have an open door policy for them. Uh, Many of these kids, like kids, most of them are young enough to be my son. I had one of the employees that had been here for 12 or 13 years. I had to give him a kind of a bad sign. But I sat down and I actually explained it to him. And when I got through explaining it, he thanked me and said, in his entire time here, he never been told anything. Never been given a reason why he was given a sign, but he was given a sign for a So I think it means a lot to sit and talk to people, try to work things well, let them understand what you're going into. We're going to have to get our own to buy into our department. We can get them to buy into the department and they're part of the solution. Thank you so much. I know y'all are all interested and there's more questions, but I think the chair is going to tackle me. If I ask any more, I've been cut off. So I'm going to invite you to the next forum to hear the other questions. Thank you.
If you have questions, I really appreciate you um, asking those. Look forward to visiting with you. Um, some of these forums, they kind of drag on, and I hope you'll stay with us. You'll find that a lot of questions you hear may not have anything to do with the job that we're about to do, but just be patient. Every once in a while, you'll get a good question that matters, and I hope you'll pay close attention. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much uh, for being here. Uh, let me tell you uh, exactly what I, I did do down here. Uh, I worked to get good conservative legislation passed. Sometimes that wasn't easy, but sometimes the folks at the top didn't want to do it. You have to join together with your friends, and you have to push things forward that are important to this city. And that's exactly what I did. I did uh, co-sponsor legislation that was the Pastor Protection Act. It increased freedom for pastors, so that the pastors didn't have to ask permission from the federal government to follow their religion. Uh, I also co-sponsored legislation that gave you four billion dollars in tax cuts. Uh, I also co-authored legislation that allowed you to carry a gun. Open. All of these things enhanced your freedom. Because of this, I am endorsed by all the conservative groups in the state. Uh, they have looked at my record. Now I have a record to run on, and they've said Dr. Spitzer kept his word. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. He worked to pass legislation so that people can live their lives a little more free. That does include the National Rifle Association. It does include both major uh, pro-life organizations, the Texas Alliance for Life and the Texas Right for Life. Uh, it also includes the uh, Texas uh, Agri Fund uh, for Farm Bureau, which I just got that one today. So it also includes the Texas Medical Association. Uh, there are folks that know that Dr. Spitzer did stuff that was really important for you and for this state and for this county and for this city. Uh, opposed to that, uh, Mr. Gooden was in there for four years ahead of me. And uh, thank you guys for putting me in there, by the way. I really appreciate that. And uh, he took almost a million dollars from outside of the city. Uh, for that, he passed four bills. Those four bills, two of which don't have anything to do with this county or the other county. District at all. And uh, one of them ran into highway and one of them created a fee and a regulation. Fees and regulations are not conservative. That's why the conservatives support me. Thank you. Well, our first question is directed forward to both Mr. Spitzer and Mr. Goodman. The question is I am interested in on your views concerning charter schools and vouchers. Also, I'm interested in your main goal for education in the next session. Um, charter schools and vouchers. I think charter schools are trying to figure out the problems. We all know that there's problems and we all need to make our schools better. I was out the other day and there was a young man uh, I mean, you know, he was probably 10, and he was leaving probably a six or seven year old sister. Uh, they got off the bus and they walked to a trailer house that none of you want to live in. And uh, their best chance for an education and advance itself in this world is for us to make our public schools as good as they can be. And uh, voucher programs are not going to help in this city. They're just not. We give that to those children all the money in the world for a voucher, but they're never going to be able to use it because they need that bus to take them. Houston schools. They need that bus to take it to Houston schools, and Houston schools have to be the best that they can keep so that those children can rise up from where they are and live the American dream. And, uh, and that's my goal in education. So I don't support vouchers. I've been accused of uh, being a big proponent of those. And, uh, but they're not going to help in this district. The folks in their district, they vote. They vote with their, where they send their children. Thank you. There's a good charter schools and a bad charter schools. And one of the things we did when I was in office was pass legislation to help shut down the bad ones, uh, the bad charter schools, that is. And uh, as for private school vouchers, I'm against private school vouchers. There's actually a push, though, uh, because folks know that we can't get private school vouchers passed in the legislature. There's a push uh, for what they call backdoor uh, vouchers, and it's for tax credits for businesses that contribute to private schools, which is the same thing. Um, my opponent will, will say that he's opposed to vouchers. For that, 
Um, I also want to correct something about one of the bills that I filed that actually regulates process servers. And all of them were for it. Rhonda Huey uh, is on the board that uh, does that. It's a great thing because it makes sure that people knocking on your door, maybe when you're not home or when your kids are opening the door, and serving you with a summons or serving you with uh, saying you've been sued or whatever it may be, they're not rapists and pedophiles. There's really nothing conservative about saying it's okay for rapists and pedophiles to knock on your door. And that's really what this bill fixed. So I take great exception to Dr. Schuster's argument that there was nothing conservative about it. Next question will be for both of you. The question is, do you support allowing cities with under 5,000 population to be able to enact an ordinance to restrict registered sex offenders from place of residence? Yes, I do. Actually, I filed a bill to take care of this in my first session. It failed. It was a big disappointment. We passed a lot of legislation, and sometimes bills just don't make it. Um, I can vouch for and Dr. Smith again as well, that it's very, very difficult to pass a bill in the state house, which is why you don't get all of them passed. But you should at least get one or two at the very minimum pass. Uh, but this particular bill was one that we did not get passed, and uh, we had a committee chairman that was unfavorable. I would love to uh, pass it the next time. Dr. Schitzer tried to pass it also, and he felt like that. Uh, it was actually the first bill that he filed, and he sent out a press release before the session uh, took office, he took office, um, making it a priority. So I was really pulling for it to pass. Um, I worked with uh, folks that were behind it to try to get it passed across the finish line, but it happened. So neither of us have passed that bill. I would think that that would be a priority in the next session because it's really important to those small communities. I did file uh, that legislation and uh, worked really hard uh, to get that passed. Uh, it's interesting that it did be killed by a Democrat that was a committee chair. But the way the Democrats get to be committee chairs at our state is that we elect leadership and the leadership appoints that. So uh, when Mr. Goodwin was telling you that he's behind our leadership, he's behind the folks that killed that bill. And so uh, we've got to get Republicans nominated or Republicans placed as committee chairs. If we can get that done, we'll get some good conservative legislation done. But sometimes that takes a change of leadership. Taking a change of leadership takes a little bit of courage uh, to be able to vote against the status quo. And, uh, and I did that in my first term. I was happy I did that in my first term. And uh, I will most likely, depending on if I have to do it again or not, but uh, we'll see who's there. Uh, we'll see who's, uh, how much you to vote for. And we'll vote for the most conservative guy again. Thank you. This question will be directed to both of you, Dr. Chipper and Mr. Green. The question is Do you support or oppose the legalization of marijuana in Hawaii? Uh, I, I oppose the legalization of uh, marijuana and I voted against it this last session three times. Uh, I did vote for a bill uh, that does contain a sub-product of uh, marijuana. I am a physician. I understand that drugs can be used for good things or bad things. We can use, we can use uh, morphine to treat people's pain, or we can use the same poppy plant to make heroin to uh, get people high. And so there's two components of uh, marijuana. Uh, one of them is THC, that's the stuff that gets you high, and there's one that's called CBD oil. And CBD oil has actually been shown to help children, which are neurologically devastated, who have intractable seizures. Um, not having many seizures. And so I voted for a bill that allowed that to happen. You can't get high off of the THC component is too low. And so it allows two doctors to prescribe America, this CBD oil, which is a derivative of marijuana. But if you can't get high on it, it's monitored by the, the uh, Texas Department of uh, Public Safety to make sure you can't get high off of it. And it allows children with intractable seizures to get some relief. I don't support legalization of marijuana, and I would have supported this bill that uh, Dr. Stitcher just told you about. And I'm glad he brought it up because it's really a good example of kind of the effective versus ineffective argument I've been making. The author of that bill actually voted against the Speaker of the House, too, uh, but they managed to get the bill passed. So just because you vote against the Speaker doesn't mean you don't get a bill passed. Uh, you've really got to be ineffective to not get a bill passed. It's not just the case of voting against the Speaker. The Speaker has really ushered in an era of conservative victory that we had not seen before he took office. Voter ID had not passed. We were waiting on that. 
pastor protection that Dr. Stitch is taking credit for. He said that the leadership uh, needs to be thrown out to get conservative victories accomplished. Well, I thought that was one. You can't take credit for things that pass that are conservative winners uh, by Speaker Strauss when you didn't vote for him. Next question will be directed towards Mr. Gooden. It will not require a rebuttal, so just Mr. Gooden, the question is, in the 2014 election, why did you miss all but one of the debates in Colton and Hillary counties? You know, in 2014, we lost that election. We made a lot of mistakes. And not going to some of those debates uh, was probably one of them. And I think people can really appreciate uh, when someone admits to making mistakes. I don't plan to be perfect. Uh, we didn't do everything right in that election, and I think we lost it uh, for several reasons, not just that one. And uh, we did go to some forums, we didn't go to all of them, probably should have. And uh, this cycle, I think we've been to eight or nine, maybe even, can't even keep count. There's several more on the agenda. Um, so really, there's no excuse for anyone not to at least have one forum to go to. Um, but I'm really proud of the way we're running this campaign this time. We've got to go to got this. And maybe they voted for me, but they didn't really get out and work for us. And we've really got that going for us this time. We've got the endorsement of the Coffin County uh, Fire Chief and Firefighters Association. They've never endorsed anyone before. And they endorsed my campaign because they know that I will fight for them in Austin. I'm not rattling off Austin endorsements, and I'm proud of these Coffin County endorsements. And that's what's really important for us. This question will be directed for Dr. Spencer. Uh, MO and no rebuttal. The question is, are the rumors about you being too sick to run and not lawful to practice the truth? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, I'm licensed to practice medicine. Never, never surrendered my license. Uh, never had my license restricted in any shape or fashion. Uh, actually, I just applied to a new place to do a little bit of moonlighting and they looked at all my stuff and said, you're good. And uh, as far as my health, uh, I'm standing here in front of you today. Uh, I walked with some bunch of ladies' doors uh, today. And uh, so I'm getting out and about. I do have multiple sclerosis. Uh, I don't consider that a uh, disease that's necessarily going to slow me down. Uh, I don't walk as well as I used to. My hands work real well. Uh, my eyes work real well. There's several of you I actually know inside out because my uh, hands and eyes do work really well. So uh, we have a governor that uh, is in a wheelchair. Uh, I don't know what my future holds. The Lord does. And, uh, but I, I am perfectly capable, uh, smart enough uh, to do this job, and I continue to appreciate all of your support. Question for uh, Mr. Gooden, uh, only for him, uh, no rebuttal. Question is, will you work for the Ryan County or Ryan Company LLC? I do not. I did last uh, couple of years, and I do consulting work now. Um, and you know, I really take exception to some of the criticism of my employer at the Ryan, the Ryan firm. I've worked with them for several years, and was really, really proud of them. They do great work. Um, last week, I think thinking we were in Terrell. I can't keep up with where I am. Uh, but the mayor of Terrell is someone who would kind of vouch for the job that we do, and I'm very proud of the work I did with Ryan, and look forward to the work I can not just for Ryan, but for others um, in the state of Texas. And, and you know, I've had comments about do you serve this person or do you serve that person? I serve everyone in Coffin County, even those of you that are not for me. And uh, I want you to know that going forward, when I take office, assuming I have the honor of your vote, when we pull this election out, I'm going to look forward to uh, talking with all you folks that maybe you don't agree with some of the positions that we've taken on things, but uh, I want you to know the door is always open. Dr. Simpson, you authorized 12 bills, none of which reached the House floor. Is this a good representation of your constituents? Again, I represented my constituents very well. Uh, I passed a lot of bills. Uh, we got things done down there. Sometimes it takes uh, some work to get things done. Uh, I was going to tell you though, that I did work with the folks here. Uh, that is good representation. Uh, for the last 130 years, uh, Terrell State Hospital has stood strong. Uh, it's the biggest asset in this district. 
And so it survived through uh, two world wars and uh, through the Great Depression, uh, but it almost didn't make it through four years of Mr. Uh I was able to save Terrell State, and uh, I would, everything that I put, all those 12, uh, save the Terrell State is a big feather in my hat, and I would give up every one of those to be able to do that. I'm proud to represent the folks here and to fight for jobs here, for the pensions here, and for the patients that are getting taken care of uh, in our local hospitals. Thank you.
pension fund and TRS, TRS healthcare insurance. What would you do to preserve or improve the TRS pension fund? Um, I would ensure that we continue to keep our obligations to TRS, just so you know, the TRS stands for Texas Retirement System. If you're a teacher in the room, you know what that means. Um, we've also got ERS, which is Employee Retirement System for State Employees. It's a really big deal if you're a teacher or a retired teacher or a state employee or a retired employee uh, for the state. And if you're neither of those, maybe you've never heard of that, but it's a constant battle in Austin and one where it's important that the legislature continues to fulfill our obligations to these folks. Um, the firefighters and cops uh, around the state that are in similar pension plans are very concerned about this issue uh, because there's always typically a push to undo the pension system as it is. And there's always a push to say, well, let's make it into a 401 k plan. Um, and then someone might say, well, I want this uh, to happen because I think individuals can manage their money better. I'm 100% opposed uh, to changing uh, the pension plan, especially TRS and ERS, and also some of these law enforcement and firefighter plans. Some of them haven't been run as perhaps they need to be, for example, the Dallas one, um, but we need to make sure we fix those and make sure they're strong. You don't get paid a lot of money to be a teacher or a cop, and it's one of the few really good benefits that we have for folks. It's important uh, that we make sure TRS and ERS are very strong, and also for law enforcement for firefighters. I think it's a huge issue, and uh, I'll continue to be very, uh, very much inspired for that. Thank you. Uh, glad for that question. Uh, they excuse me, Chancellor, really got my mom and dad to uh, come here, and thank you guys for, for showing up. My mom is on uh, teacher retirement system, so I mean, I get what goes on with that. Uh, she's a retired teacher, and I know what their system looks like. Uh, this year, uh, I worked with the folks to uh, make sure that it stays strong. And one thing that they told me, we want the uh, the healthcare benefit on that to be covered, and, uh, and it was. And I actually have a certificate from the Region 10 retired teachers, and also which covers Coffin County, and Region 7, which covers Henderson County. And I have these certificates, and they say, thank you, Representative Stitzel, for standing up for us and for helping us. And so, we went down there, I went down there, and I did a good enough job that they recognized me. I again gave a certificate uh, individually saying thank you for your contribution to helping shore up this system, uh, for helping cover us, and uh, for being a champion for uh, DRS. Those are all the questions that we will have for the candidates. We will now go into closing arguments, as the lawyers say, or closing summations. Uh, each person will be able to have two minutes. We'll give two minutes. We'll start out with uh, the uh, precinct chairs. Uh, let's go with uh, Mr. Sharma. Just let everybody know this position that we hold for, for precinct chair is not a paid position, except for one thing that does give me gratification. I received a phone call today from a voter who had questions about all these candidates. And I referred them to the website to look at each individual candidate. And I didn't tell them which one I would vote for, which one my wife would vote for. I just helped them. And the biggest thing that I get out of this is thank you from total strangers that I don't know very well. And so, in reflection, I think that's pretty good pay as well. These guys will love to hear thank yous from time to time from their voters, especially if they're incumbents or new running. So, I won't take up much more time. I just want to say thank you for my wife for pushing me. Go go cruise. And uh, go take cruise. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said before, I, I don't have the experience of doing this, um, but uh, I'm dedicated to find out everything that I'm supposed to do, and, and I actually get a lot of that information and, and um, hoping that I can relay as much of it back to you guys so that y'all can know who you're voting for and even where to show up. Like I said, you know, there's many of people that I've already spoken to that didn't even know where to go and vote. 
so I've already, I've already, already made improvements there as it is. Um, but I appreciate your vote. Uh, that way I can try to make a difference for you guys to make a problem. Thank you. We'll next we'll go with the county tax assessor, Mr. Lacarusso, with Mr. Dick Murphy. Well, I thank you all for being here for this evening. There are two things I want to do when I'm reelected. One we hadn't talked about at all. It's the job of the tax office, but one of the jobs is to work with the cities and the schools all the different taxing units in the county. And I really want to try to do a better job at that than I did the last time I was here. It, it, my predecessor, I know, was very active in a lot of school boards and things. And I want to try to get back into that situation. The other thing I want to do is, and I tried to do this, couldn't, but I want to uh, get a system that allows taxpayers to pay their taxes with monthly bank drafts. It would have to be a pre-draft so that come year end it's all paid. But that keeps, especially with the dollar folks, keeps them having to come up with one big payment uh, at the end or for throughout the year. At any rate, it would make it easier on taxpayers to meet their tax obligations. I sure thank you for being here again, and I would appreciate getting reelected to go back and do that job again. Thank you. The reason, the reason I decided to run remains unchanged. The unfortunate, fragile conditions seeping throughout our country made it clear to me. We need to solve the fundamental change, the thought process, and it can start at the local level and work its way up. We must get down to business, make smart choices, limit distractions, and serve our citizens. As a resident of this county, like many of you, I'm invested in this community. We are all in this together, and we must make our votes and our voice count. Together we stand and divide three real goals. Your vote for Brenda is a vote for integrity. Your vote for Brenda is a vote for accountability. Your vote for Brenda is a vote for someone who will be accessible. Your vote for Brenda is a vote for fairness. Your vote for Brenda is a vote for someone who has no friends in the office and has no special agenda. Your vote for Brenda is for a full-time tax assessor collector. And your vote for Brenda is a vote for a tax assessor who knows I am not number one, you are. My name is Brenda Samples and I approve this message.
I'd like for you to make it a Z. I'm the one that brought on our little fresh ones to the office. I had the education, the experience, the leadership, and the management that this office needs in my time at Stone House. I want to continue to serve you as your tax assessor. Good government does not have my chance, so it will take your vote. Vote for the right person. And I ask you to reelect me, Tanya Rackler. Hawking County Sheriff's Rights will do Chief Stillman and Chief Beavers and then Bruce Ryan.
agency has to improve. People have to be given a reason to come to work. They have to have good leadership. Their pay has to be increased to where we keep people. We don't just train them and send them on. I have worked for the Sheriff's Department. I've worked in this county. I know how things work here. I know what changes need to be made. I'm an outsider to the agency. I don't have any friends or relatives or fishing buddies over there. So I will make the changes that need to be changed. Both of my opponents have been in leadership positions with the agency for years. I don't see where they take any real positive step to change things. I can't believe that Sheriff Burns is such a harsh administrator that these guys came to him with these problems and said, Sheriff, things got to change. We're losing people like a sieve. We have to get uh, things going in the right direction here. I cannot believe that he would not have made some of these changes and come to the commission of the court and work with him to make these changes. So you will have to ask yourself, who will make the changes that need to be made to improve the Sheriff's County is growing, crime is increasing. We need to get one of this support to get one over. Thank you. The 422nd Judicial District Court, and we'll have Terry Weaver and then Judge Chase. He's not tried a three days in over 15 years. 
You need to hold him accountable, and he needs to be transparent. He doesn't know anything about civil and criminal law. He's never tried a civil case or a criminal case. He runs a cubbyhole practice in Tyler, Texas, under a federally mandated welfare program. Let me tell you what he does. Under that program, it's called the 4D Court, the only thing he has responsibility for doing is collecting child support. You know what you have to know to collect child support in Texas? It's contained on a front and back sheet that tells you what the income is, what the deductions are, what the net income is, and how you multiply by either 20, 25, 30 percent, depending on the number of children. That's the calculation and the amount of knowledge you have to run a 4D board. What you have to know to run one of my courts is how to try civil, criminal, and family cases. I've done for 30 years and presided over this court for 12 years with current documents. Um, State Representative District 4, Lance Gooden, and Representative Susan. Thank you all very much. Um, you know, we've all gone to elementary school and remember they had a field day where you run races. And even if you're not any good at running races, you get a certificate of completion or a little honorable mention. And I don't want to discount that if there were kids in the room, but I looked around and there are uh, But this is for all adults. Sorry. No, I forgot about you. I consider you a wrong, the wrong adult, Mr. Beavers. <laughs> uh, you know, we've got to have a state where they can get a bill passed. Um, I love getting certificates from folks. But I'll be honest, I didn't save any of them. Uh, they typically didn't make it through the session because it was just clutter. Uh, what mattered uh, was casework that we accomplished, bills that we passed. If you go to the State House website, you can see all those. Those are actual records. I've got a printout straight off the website for you guys to look at. If you're truly an undecided voter, I hope you'll say hello to me and uh, introduce yourself at the back of the room. These forms, um, they really try hard, but you know this. This is the only forum I go to, the local ones here in Kaufman, where the questions are all anonymous um, and they don't say who the author is. So that's really atypical. Uh, and because of that, you don't get a really good, honest uh, back and forth uh, with the voters. Lots of questions don't get asked if they don't meet the committee's approval. No one knows who the committee is. The authors are never included on the question. So I'm going to go ahead and start working my way to the back of the room. And if you're undecided, I really want to talk with you. If you're just a friend, I want to talk to you too. Uh, but thank you all so much for your support. I hope you have your vote. And you all be careful going home. Thank you guys uh, for being here tonight. Again, I'm thanking mom and dad for being here. There's been a lot of supporters, people that have really been with me over the years uh, that know me. Uh, you know my character and uh, really poke hard on some things. Uh, and there was a uh, forum, I think two nights ago, that uh, people stood and asked us questions. We should sit here in our two shoes and uh, we answered the questions. They came from the folks. Uh, no filters, no nothing. Uh, my best format, frankly, is that. It's just standing up and having people come up and say, hey, you asked me a question, you asked an honest question, I'll give you an honest answer. Uh, it's been my honor. Uh, to serve you guys in the state house, uh, to go down there to the floor and stand there and know that people are going to say things and do things, but that I know what the truth is and I get to stand for the truth, I get to seek the truth, and uh, I get to fight for my folks. Uh, thank you guys for showing up here tonight. It's great to be here. Uh, it is good to get to answer questions, to get to seek the folks. And uh, for you guys to get all your, your questions answered, to see us and have your question answered. Uh, again, thank you for being here. Uh, God bless you all. And uh, please come to the rest of them too. Bring your questions. If you have to catch in between, bring your tough ones. I want to hear them. Thank you guys. We're in Coffee County 2016 candidates. Give them all a big hand. I want to make sure before I get uh, to uh, thank the Forney ISD for letting us use this facility, and especially Rick Beer. Uh, security, I can thank Mr. Bishop.
Chris, Chris Alvarez, Judge, Judge Jones, and uh, Judge Wiley. Uh, these, these forums are put together to give you an opportunity to meet the candidates and ask them questions. Not all the questions can get asked. I don't want to keep you here to midnight. If you want to say midnight, I can do it. But in an effort for time management, I have to do things in a very calibrated, precision way to get us out of here at a reasonable time in the school night. So we've kept all the questions that did not get asked tonight, and they will be at the top of the list in the next forum, which will be a compliment uh, the next Thursday night at Magnolia Hall, is what they call it now. <clears throat> but anyway, we put together the best effort we could to make sure that everybody gets a fair opportunity to make their, make their plea to you, the uh, public, and for you to have the opportunity to question these folks. And please remember how important the primary election day is, which is March 1st. Early voting starts on February 16th. It's a Tuesday this year. This is your opportunity, primarily the only opportunity, you will get to vote for these people who will represent you for the next four years. So please take advantage of the opportunity and the privilege and the country that you can vote for who you want to represent you. Good night.